very much. So we will now move to the debates. The next item on the agenda is the joint debate on the European semester. The report by Mrs. Tignali, European Semester for Economic Policy Coordination 2023. And the report by Mrs. Dura Ferrandis, European Semester for Economic Policy Coordination, Employment and Social Priorities for 2023. And let me invite the speaker, our rapporteur, Mrs. Tignali. The floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, President. Last year, when we debated the semester report in this house, war had just broken out in Ukraine. The war had, and it's still having, a devastating impact on the Ukrainian population. To a completely different extent, it had, and it's still having an impact on us as well. The EU was one of the most exposed advanced economies to downward risks, given its geographical proximity to Ukraine and also the heavy reliance on energy imports, particularly on gas from Russia. The impact of high energy prices and the subsequent inflation led to the erosion of household purchasing power and industry competitiveness, in particular that of the SMEs. So on the one hand, we all know that the low and stable inflation rate will be an important condition for long-term sustainable economic growth, so it's important to intervene uh, on inflation. But on the other hand, however, we also know that a reduction in aggregate demand combined with the less favorable financing conditions, which are related when you... Uh, when when you high uh, uh, interest rates could lead to a sharp decline in investment and therefore in future economic growth. So investment in renewables and energy efficiency, for example, could also suffer, although these are precisely the investments required to reduce reliance on imported fossil fuels and structurally limit inflation driven by energy prices. So it's quite a complicated conundrum. And, uh, and these deteriorating economic conditions have increased the vulnerabilities and risks. The rising mortgages rates and the deterioration in debt servicing capacity resulting from the decline in real income of households may cause further distress for families and for financial markets in general. So against this background, we need to act. In our public debates, we always recall that the primary objective of the ECB is to maintain a price stability, of course. But we should also recall that the aim of the union as a whole should be to dampen the impact of current turbulences on the real economy and to minimize future risks, thereby defending the well-being of our citizens and preserving our production structure and the international competitiveness of our companies, as well as decent working conditions for our workers. So in this regard, we need adequate and coordinated uh, fiscal, structural, and regulatory policies that complement the ECB's monetary policy actions in order to support household incomes and provide targeted and temporary support to companies suffering from supply bottlenecks and high energy costs. The policy leeway created by the activation of the General Escape Clause was very important, was determinant in strengthening uh, member states' uh, economic and social resilience, both during the COVID pandemic and also in the last year uh, after the war uh, started. So the Commission released last week uh, the fiscal policy guidance for 2024. However, we need more clarity as regard the medium and long term. This is why we call in this report for an urgent review of the EU fiscal framework, preferably to be completed prior to the deactivation of the general escape clause. The Commission's communication of last November is an important step in the right direction. It addressed the most of the concerns emerged in the last years in the public debate, in particular as regard the simplification of the framework and the more tailor-made governance the revised regulatory framework should allow member states to have sufficient leeway to deliver decisive crisis resolution measures when they are needed and should preserve the flexibility already inbuilt in the stability and growth uh, path. 
Um, so, uh, of course, there are some issues that are not addressed also in the Commission communication, but that are important. Uh, so, for example, the issue of macroeconomic stabilization is not properly addressed, and uh, we believe that the Commission should build also on the positive experience we've had in the past years, for example, with the SURE. Uh, but uh, we, most importantly, we hope that there will be a debate and that the Commission, the Council, uh, will consider our contribution to the semester cycle and the Commission will soon be able to bring forward legislative proposals on the reform of economic governance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker, rapporteur, uh, Mrs. Dura Ferrandis. The floor is yours. Por favor. Gracias, señora Presidenta. Señor Comisario, Consejo, navegamos por una transición. Nuestra nave debe tener un timón social para llegar a buen puerto. El semestre que defendemos este año desde el Parlamento Europeo pone toda su fuerza en garantizar que los objetivos de crecimiento económico vayan ligados a una transformación socioecológica e inclusiva de nuestras economías, considerando todas las transiciones al mismo nivel y evitando los desequilibrios sociales, económicos y medioambientales mediante la lucha contra la pobreza, la reducción de las desigualdades y la creación de puestos de trabajo dignos con salarios y condiciones decentes. Por ello, y también como prioridad, el semestre de este año reconoce la necesidad de mejorar el marco de gobernanza actual. Los objetivos de crecimiento económico deben estar en consonancia con los objetivos de desarrollo sostenible y el pilar europeo de derechos sociales. Y la arquitectura de gobernanza europea debe basarse en la solidaridad, la convergencia social al alza, la integración y la inversión en servicios públicos de calidad. Las normas presupuestarias europeas tienen un papel fundamental para este fin y por ello destacamos que deben facilitar la inversión pública y la financiación necesaria para conseguir la transición hacia una economía justa con la naturaleza, pero también justa con las personas y los territorios. En esta línea y en previsión de la desactivación de la cláusula de salvaguarda, los Estados miembros van a necesitar mayor flexibilidad y la exclusión de las inversiones sociales del cálculo del déficit excesivo. Con ello, los Estados miembros más endeudados podrían adoptar sendas de ajuste individual más flexibles que les permitan tener un margen presupuestario suficiente para llevar a cabo las inversiones y reformas necesarias para unas transiciones ecológica y digital socialmente justas. La consolidación presupuestaria solo será sostenible si el impacto distributivo de los gastos reasignados o los cambios en los ingresos está bien calibrado y contribuye a reducir las desigualdades socioeconómicas. El semestre, como principal instrumento de coordinación de políticas con el que contamos, tiene que permitir a los Estados miembros hacer frente a las crisis y prevenir futuros choques, pero no solo económicos, sino también sociales. Por ello, el informe de este año también contempla la creación de un marco de convergencia social como sistema de vigilancia de los posibles riesgos a la convergencia social al alza y que detecte potenciales consecuencias negativas de otras políticas para la implementación del pilar social. Este marco de convergencia incluiría también objetivos sociales concretos a alcanzar. Desarrollar instrumentos que autorregulen las fluctuaciones del mercado y garanticen la sostenibilidad y supervivencia de nuestro sistema de bienestar social es uno de los puntos centrales de este semestre. Medidas, por ejemplo, que contribuyan a frenar la volatilidad de los precios energéticos. Por ello, necesitamos herramientas para abordar el impacto desigual del cambio climático y la degradación del medio ambiente en los diferentes grupos de ingresos, así como las consecuencias sociales de la transformación de nuestras sociedades hacia la neutralidad climática. Un fondo social del clima puede ser el inicio de un mecanismo que siente las bases de esquemas de protección social ecológica a escala nacional con el apoyo de la Unión Europea para reforzar la resiliencia social frente a los cambios climáticos y la degradación medioambiental. Y también, en lo que respecta a fondos, el informe contempla como novedad un fondo de soberanía con el fin de garantizar, entre otras cosas, que todos los Estados miembros dispongan de flexibilidad para hacer frente a los retos sociales, climáticos y medioambientales. Además, se considera que cualquier futura iniciativa de financiación de la Unión Europea debe integrar la justicia social como principio rector. En definitiva, un semestre ecosocial que proteja a las personas. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Now it should be Mrs. Stavrou on behalf of the Committee on Budgets, but I don't see... Oh, she is here. Okay, very good. So the floor is yours.
Thank you, President. Dear colleagues, uh, I will speak on uh, behalf of my uh, colleague, Petri Sarvama, who is the Rapporteur of the Budget Opinion on the European Semester for Economic Policy uh, Coordination 2023. First, we would like to thank Ms. Satinagli for this report. Uh, it raises important uh, topical issues related to the current challenges and opportunities of the EU economy. The annual European semester cycle has also an important uh, role in anticipating the EU's economic outlook. Coming from the Budget Committee perspective, Mr. Sarvama has a few observations. We need to remember how uncertain times we are living because of past, current and future crises. All of these relate to the uncertain economic outlook of the European Union. On the other hand, it is good that we have been able to respond to this crisis. The most concrete example is the recovery and resilience facility and its stabilizing impact on the EU economy. It is also good that we have started to discuss the economic sustainability of the EU in the long term, especially bearing in mind that government debt to GDP ratios are historically high. Member states should be able to return to a sustainable budgetary approach eventually. Lastly, it is worth mentioning that the introduction of new own resources, as agreed also in the interinstitutional agreement, is crucially important so that the next generation EU debt can be refinanced without detriment to future programs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now let me invite on behalf of the Council Minister for EU Affairs, Mrs. Rusval. The floor is yours. Thank you, Madam President, Honourable Members, Commissioner. Thank you for this opportunity to hold the regular discussion on the European semester here today. The European semester remains a very important framework to ensuring effective policy coordination across four dimensions. Environmental sustainability, productivity, fairness and macro macroeconomic stability all of which are key for the economic prosperity and sustainable competitiveness of our Union. The policy coordination is more important than ever, as we are facing multiple, cha multiple challenges resulting from the Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine. Our post-COVID recovery is being challenged at various levels, and, and this requires policy measures that are supportive of inclusive and sustainable growth. Rising inflation, interest rates and energy prices have left many companies and households struggling. Given this mix of challenges, our policies must remain coordinated and flexible. The EU and the Member States must work both on immediate actions to address the current challenges and not at least the long, and the long, the long strategy to boost competitiveness and productivity for a green and digital transition. These crucial questions will be on the agenda on the next week's European Council. We must step up our efforts to implement the digital and green transition. This required swift, targeted and coordinated actions, both at the EU and national levels, to carry out structural, structural reforms. With Next Generation EU and the Repower EU, we also have funding to finance key investments and reforms in Member States. Honourable Members, so far labour markets are proving surprisingly resilient, but there are several challenges. Real, real wages are declining, which are weighing for, for, on households. At the same time, employers are finding it hard to, find, to hire in some sectors. That is why we need more ambitious actions at the EU and the national level to promote skills through education, training, upskilling and reskilling. Therefore, I am happy to, to, that this is, uh, is emphasized in the European skills of, uh, of Year of Skills 20, 2023. In the context of dem demographic challenges, these actions will contribute to meet the challenges of labour shortages and the transformation of jobs. Policies geared toward skills and competence for the green transition hold the key to Europe's full resilience and prosperity. 
Honourable Members, as Council Presidency, we intend to ensure a smooth European semester cycle and that all parties concerned do their utmost to achieve the common objectives of seeing the country-specific recommendations approved by the European Council in June. Allow me also to add a word on the reform of the EU economic governance, uh, governance framework. The Council has been working intensely uh, on the Commission's orientation for this reform. And the Presidency has worked hard to find a compromise, and I hope that we hope that all that we will find a compromise that all states can agree on. Many of the multiple challenges we are facing requires ambitious reforms and substantial investments. Moreover, we need to address the increase of public debts as a de result of the COVID crisis and the war of Ukraine. Reducing these high level of debts should be done in a gradual and realistic manner. We now stand ready to examine the Commission's new legislative proposal on economic governance, governance. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Minister. Now I would like to invite on behalf of the Commission, Commissioner Schmidt, the floor is yours. <clears throat> Dear Chair, Honourable Members, well, first, in the name of my colleagues, Vice President Dombrovskis and Commissioner Gentiloni, who are attending uh, today's ECOFIN, and myself, I would like to thank the uh, rapporteurs, Ms. Uh, Tinali and uh, Ms. Estrella Dura Ferrandis, and the committees on the Economic and Monetary Affairs and Employment and Social Affairs Committee for their reports, which provide a valuable contribution in view of the European semester priorities for 2023. Let me first focus on the economic and fiscal side. The European economy is facing multiple shocks, but has shown also remarkable resilience. We narrowly avoided a recession and started 2023 on a more optimistic footing. But even if the peak of inflation appears to be behind us, consumers and businesses still struggle with high energy and food prices and inflationary pressures remain. So while the economy is doing better than initially expected, we are not out of the woods yet. In all, in 23, growth is likely to remain subdued. There are also structural challenges we need to tackle. The EU's energy dependence, the green and digital transitions, skills shortages, and the need to strengthen our overall competitiveness. All this against the background of high uncertainty as Russia continues its criminal aggression against Ukraine. The European semester has proven to be an agile instrument for European policy coordination. Our focus now is to deal with the immediate consequences of the ongoing shocks and to meet longer term common EU objectives and priorities. In recent months, Member States and the Commission have worked to coordinate it, targeted and affordable measures to cushion the impact of the energy crisis on vulnerable households and the most impacted businesses while safeguarding public finances and the single market. Together with the IRF, the semester will continue to ensure an effective reform momentum in each member state up to 2026, combined with a reform and investment strategies enabled by other EU programs. Fiscal policy coordination is vital. It provides an anchor of stability, supports investments in the twin transition, strengthens resilience, and allows buffers to be built to cope with future shocks. Last week, the Commission presented its orientations for fiscal policy for 2024. After three years of sizable fiscal support, the focus should now be on improving debt sustainability. 
Prudent fiscal policy will support monetary policy in the current high inflation environment. As the European economy is no longer in severe downturn, we confirm that the general escape clause will be deactivated at the end of 2023. The guidance also reflects the fact the EU's fiscal framework is in a transition phase. As views co converge on several key issues, the Commission intends to table legislative proposals after the European Council later this month. The guidance should be seen as a bridge between how the rules have worked in the past and how they may work in the future. This means that certain elements of the Commission's reform orientations can already be applied. To be specific, we invite Member States to set fiscal targets that ensure the respect of the 3% of GDP deficit reference value and ensure a path for credible continuous debt reduction or for keeping it at, a sustainable, at sustainable levels. On that basis, in spring, the Commission will propose fiscal recommendations for the quantitative requirement as well as qualitative guidance on investment and energy measures. As regards the measures to cushion the impact of high energy prices on households and businesses, remaining measures should be better targeted on those most affected. Moreover, as energy prices head lower, governments should move to phasing out most of the support measures, starting with the least targeted ones. Finally, all member states should preserve investment to boost sustainable and inclusive growth in line with the common EU priorities, namely in the field of fair transitions. The co-legislators have acted rapidly to phase out the EU's dependence on Russian fossil fuels, promote zero carbon sources and strengthen energy resilience. Now that the repower EU regulation has come into force, we are leveraging the recovery and resilience facility to achieve a secure, affordable and sustainable supply of energy. Revising national recovery and resilience plans and incorporating Repower EU chapters with additional funding represent an opportunity to respond to persistent as well as to new challenges in the context of the new Green Deal industrial plan. Let me now turn to the employment skills and social dimension. The Employment Report provides an important input on the employment and social priorities, focusing inter alia on wage and social protection policies, the European Child Guarantee, the use of distributional impact assessments, as well as its call for the strengthening of the social dimension of the semester and the introduction of a social convergence framework. This important debate on the European semester takes indeed place in an uncertain as already mentioned, in an uncertain and challenging environment. While the un unemployment rate remains low overall in the Union at only 6.1%, specific groups are still underrepresented in the employment statistics. In particular, youth unemployment is still very high at 15%, and the employment gap between women and men continues to be substantial, 10.8 percentage points. Furthermore, the potential of older workers is not sufficiently used. At the same time, labor and skills shortages are increasing across member states and sectors. And this is also due to inadequate quality, equity and labor market relevance of the education and training systems. Let me just mention one particular issue, which is appalling. It's the youth need rate, which still remains high, with uh, over 13%. This represents, <clears throat> this represents a real challenge, with eight, more than 8 million young people excluded from the labor market and all kinds of training schemes. A social problem with long-lasting consequences, <clears throat> a major loss for our economies, facing labor shortages. And here I think strong action is absolutely needed. 
With the ongoing high inflation, we still need prompt, adequate and well-targeted policy responses to address poverty risks as more people and households are experiencing a drop in real incomes. Adequate wage policies and updates of minimum wages in line with the directive as well as collective bargaining play a key role to prevent increases of in-work poverty. This is particularly important as inflation has significantly outpaced wage growth so far, which brings social risks, especially for low-wage earners. The European semester remains the key integrated policy coordination framework to address these challenges and pursue key common priorities. Let me underline that coordinated policy action in the semester is key to advance the implementation of the European Pillar of Social Rights. I welcome Parliament's call to progress in the implementation of the European Pillar of Social Rights in the framework of the European Semester and the Economic Governance Review. Implementing the 21 Pillar Action Plan also means advancing on the 2030 EU headline and national targets on employment skills and poverty reduction. This requires that ambitious reforms and investments are put into place by member states in line with the commitments made in Porto for a strong social Europe. This is all the more important also in view of the very significant transformations that Europe has to undergo to affirm itself as a global leader on the train transitions. Skills are of course central to this and this is why 23 as the European Year of Skills will be crucial in promoting skills acquisition, reskilling and upskilling, helping people get the right skills for quality jobs. Through the Green Deal Industrial Plan, we will further accelerate our work on skills for the green transition, including digital skills with the final aim of supporting competitive and sustainable industrial policies in the EU and creating quality jobs. Skills are an essential tool for our competitiveness as well as for enhancing productivity. The revisions of the recovery and resilience plans in the context of Repower EU give all member states an opportunity to boost green skills and reskill our workforce and also importantly address the causes of energy poverty. The semester itself will evolve Discussions are ongoing on the economic governance review and in parallel member states are discussing a possible new social convergence framework. This will have implications for the future European semester of economic and employment policy coordination. And I'm sure that by using the tools we have more effectively, we can make the semester stronger as a framework to jointly pursue our common priorities and achieve a fairer, more inclusive and greener growth with a competitive and innovative economy that works for people. Thank you. Grazie. Grazie al Commissario Smith. Ora, eh...